Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we have the new Tier 9 British Battlecruiser, the Duncan, in port to review for you guys today. Before we get going, massive shout to the channel's Patreons that definitely made this review possible. This is a channel that is not supported by Wargaming. I'm not a CC or supported by them in any way, shape, or form. So the generous donations from these Patreons make these reviews possible. It's the best place to support the channel besides just watching the videos and streams. So link down in the description down below if you wish to join that. And the Duncan. This is the... which Let's see actually what, what uh, Wargaming describes it as here. They describe it as... Yep, yeah, the G3. The G3 Battlecruiser. Which is a pretty wonky looking ship. Um, it, it was quite a design. If you ever read into the history of the G3 or seen the design schematics for it. Uh, as you can tell, yeah. There, there were some new ideas going on here. Um, the ideas with these turrets being way up here is that you only have to have a main battery built that extends from, of course, turret A through turret X. Rather than having to, like on a traditional battleship, have an armor belt that's all the way up here versus ending back here where the third turret traditionally would be. So, guns are all in the front, machine stage is all in the back. Someone is ripping on a saxophone back there. I think. Yeah, they are. Yeah, you go, guy. Um, so, yeah, yeah, th that's what's going on here with this design. And the St. Vincent, which is, I believe, the J3 design, is this with 18 inch guns. But uh, that one's a little bit too pricey, even for my blood so let's go ahead and take a look at the duncan today and we'll take her into battle and see what she's like i'm i'm very excited that these ships are finally in game i've been waiting for these for quite some time so oh as always too uh, art department and modeling guys absolutely knock this thing out of the park there's a ton of little details on this ship if you can't tell even in the very smoggy uh, London port that we that we're in right now. Look at all of this. It is great. I I, I want to build a model of this ship, but also looking at all these details, I also don't at all want to build a model of this ship. <laughs> but yeah, great job, guys. Absolutely great. This is a techline ship. The ship's free, by the way. Uh, in two updates, you can currently get it on the random bundles, which I got this one on. I think the 18th um, bundle, and then I got Collingwood like two after that. So, I mean, that's still like 20,000 doubloons, which is a little crazy for, of course, a tech line ship. But again, just wait two patches and uh, you can grind the ship out. But you can tell if you want to grind it out by this review today. All right. So, oh yeah, by the way, new economic bonus system. That's what it looks like if you haven't seen it before. This is the ship's permanent XP and credits bonus, which uh, you don't get with the ship. If you do get it in the random bundles, you have to buy this afterwards. Um... This is where you apply your other bonuses and such. But anyway, on to the ship's actual stats. Let's get out of uh, this screen. So the armor, we have a 25mm bow. This is a battle cruiser. And we have a 32mm upper belt. Side plating is 32. 25mm stern and stern deck. Bow deck is also 25. Central, central deck is 32. Again, these do be battle cruisers. Uh, let's take away your superstructure. Oh, look, there's a 83mm, 108mm, and 152mm space right there. Okay. Let's take a look at her Citadel. Man, that guy on the sax is killing it. Citadel is... Yep. High and dry. Does it have any armor coming down over it? It does not. High and dry Citadel, you do have the torpedo protection going over it, so you have a little bit of spaced armor effect going on here that might be a little bit trolly like the British like British like the French cruisers which also came out today too. Um or French battle cruisers that came out today. So you might have a little bit of a of a trolling effect going on here, but again it is a battle cruiser. It's not the toughest ship ever made. I don't imagine it can get the Citadel quite easily. And survivability, she has seventy five thousand two hundred hit points, which is actually fairly normal for a tier nine um battleship, so yeah, which I would imagine, because the ship is massive, if you can't tell. Like, it, it, it is quite large. 23% torpedo damage reduction. Okay. Artillery, you get 9 419mm guns. 
These reload in 31 seconds, have a 180 time of 30 seconds. They have a maximum dispersion of 198 meters at 17.9 kilometers. The HE does a maximum damage of 6,150, a 47% chance of causing a fire on the target, 70 millimeters of HE pin, 792 meters a second is their velocity coming out the tubes. The AP does a maximum damage of 13,050, and those come out the tubes at 747 meters a second. So some decently quick shells. Uh, we'll see how they work. They do have the short fuse time on the AP. Her secondary guns, you get 8 by 2 so 60 of the 113 millimeter guns. They reload in 5 seconds. They have a maximum range of 7 kilometers. Maximum damage of 1700, 8% chance of causing a fire on the target. They can pin 19 millimeters of armor. So, um, they did toy around the idea of these ships having good secondaries, I do believe. But, yeah, 19 millimeters of pin at tier 9. No, even with IFHC, that's not really going to be worth building into. But you do have 12 of these 152s that reload in 12 seconds, have a maximum range of 7 kilometers. They do a maximum damage of 2,150, 9% chance of causing a fire on the target, 25 millimeters of pin, and they come out the tubes at 884 meters a second. Yeah, I mean, maybe DD repellent, but yeah, I don't think the secondaries are the way to build into with these ships. Torpedoes! Now here's what's interesting. She has below the waterline torpedo tubes as we have seen in that crazy video with these torpedoes. Um, obviously I don't know exactly how these work just yet but you'll see in the gameplay section. So she has two by one so there's only one tube on either side and I like how it has a 180 timing though it's fixed torpedo tubes. So these will reload at 55 seconds. They have a 10 kilometer range, a maximum damage right now before anything has been applied to it of 29,367, 30,000 damage alpha with one torp. They travel at 67 knots, they are detected from 1.7 kilometers away. Um, again, I'm not sure exactly how the, these work, we'll see about that in the gameplay section, but that is quite the, uh, the oomph there, 30,000, almost 30,000 torpedo alpha there. She's an A rating of A before we get any commander skills and modules on her. So you have 18 of the single 20mm Orlikans, tw uh, 20 of the dual mounted single, uh, not single, 10 of the dual mounted Orlikans, that's what I should have said. Uh, you get 10 of the dual mounted Bofors, 4 of the good old uh, octuple mounted Vickers, and then 8 of the H113 millimeter secondaries are also AA. You have a continuous damage of 349, a shell explosion damage of 1400, a priority sector reinforcement at 35%, and it goes out to 5.8 kilometers. So, again, AA is really up to how good is the enemy CV. Maneuverability this battle cruiser moves at 32 knots. You have a Turing circle of 910 meters, an order shift time of 16.6 .6 seconds. A uh, concealment of 14.9 kilometer space is actually not that bad, but given that the guns only have a 17 kilometer range, that's, mm, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. And for her... Oh, yeah, they redid the equipment screen. I forgot about that. For her... her oh, uh, hold up. I forgot. I put the new hole, the improved hole on, but I forgot to put the range on. So now she has a range of 19.7 kilometers. That's much better. Okay. So you get DFAA... And a engine boost that boosts you by 8% is active for 120 seconds, reloads in 120 seconds. Three of the specialized repair teams, this is a super heal as you can tell, regens 1,504 HP per second. And cools off in 80 seconds. And you get the normal damage con that is active for 15 seconds, which is actually pretty good. And reloads in 80 seconds. Alright, so that is the ship. Yes, I showed you guys everything. So I'm going to go ahead and build this ship out. And then I'll meet you guys right back here to showcase my build on her. Alrighty, so I've gone with pretty much a standard battleship build because there's not really many builds for battleships. So for the modules, I went with main armaments mod 1. This, of course, decreases the chance of our guns getting knocked out, and we don't want that to happen. Went with damage con mod 1 as... Wait, did I say damage con? Main armaments mod 1. 
Then Damage Con Mod 1, which of course decreases our chance of catching on fire or having a flood, so that's always good. Then I went with Aiming Systems Mod 1 to rein in that dispersion a bit. This gives you a 7% boost to your shell's dispersion. Then I went with Damage Con Mod 2, which decreases the time it takes for you to recover from fire or flooding by 15%, so that's very nice. Then I went with Concealment Mod 1, which decreases the ship's concealment by 10%. Then I went with Gunfire Control System Mod 2, which increases the ship's range by 16% for the main battery guns. And I figured at tier 9 and 10, so many matches are at, shoot, mostly 18 plus kilometers for most of the match. So 19 kilometer main battery gun range would work for some times, but for most of the matches that we see, you need a little bit longer reach than that. And uh, here's the signals that I've mounted, pretty much the standard signal setup that I run on when I run. And then we went with, again, pretty much a standard Battleship Commander build. Preventive maintenance to further decrease the chance of those modules of getting incapacitated. Then we went with MLG turrets to increase the gears, which increases the turret traverse speed so we can get the turrets on target a little bit faster. As these are ships that are, by Wargaming's description, made for medium to close range now. Then we went for Adrenaline Rush, which gives you a boost to your reload time when you take damage, and this ship is going to take damage. Uh, then, if you're coming down here, I would take the Emergency Repair Expert first, because that gives you an additional charge to your heal. And I mean, you got that super heal, and you want as many of those as you can get. Come back around and grab the Consilin Expert to get, to get that detection down even more. Then come back around and grab Fire Prevention for your last skill, which will give you a 10% boost to the chance of you not catching on fire and reduce the amount of fires on your ship to one. And then finally grab Basics of Survivability, which decreases the time it takes for you to put out those fires and floods even faster and increases the restoration time of your modules by 15% as well. So that now gives us a ship with... Uh, guns that get out to 22.8 kilometers with a maximum dispersion of 223 meters at that range um, which again we'll see how that works but again at higher tier you just need to be able to reach out that far you have a 24 second one I need to tell on your turrets now which is very nice and then for the concealment we're now down to 12.1 kilometers which is very 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 nice um and of course we have four charges of that. I don't think there's anything else that I need to show you guys on the ship. No, there is not. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead, jump into battle with this thing, and I'll meet you guys right back here for a voiceover review of the new Tier 9 Tech Line British Battle Cruiser, the Duncan. Alright guys, voiceover Mountbatten here, and well, the Duncan... Now, the Duncan is very much a Tier 9 tech line ship. And by that, I mean Tier 9 tech line ships are either in one or two categories. Either they're really great, they're one of the best ships in the line, or they're completely mediocre or absolutely <laughs> terrible. In some cases, like the old FDG. New FDG is in the much better category, but... Old FDG was absolutely miserable, it was a pain to play, so forth and so on. The Duncan is, I believe, in the... Right in the middle of that. It's got some really nice attributes about it, but then it has some really lackluster and really frustrating characteristics about her. So, my biggest issue with the Duncan is her guns. She has 1.6 Sigma, and it very much shows. Even though the dispersion on paper doesn't look too bad... I had so, so many salvos in this uh, play session that just either completely bathed the target in water, landed a little bit short, landed a little bit over, and oh, it was bad. It reminded me so much of the Lion, the Tier 9 Tech Line British Battleship. Except that the Lion has better HE shells, and an AP, I believe they're, they are essentially... Uh, the same Let me double check here before I tell you guys wrong. But the Duncan doesn't get the improved HE pin that the Lion gets. And the Duncan also has slightly less alpha on her HE shells. The Lion 
has a maximum damage of 7,200 per shell on her HE shells. The Duncan has a maximum damage on her HE shells of 6,150. So you're almost a thousand points of damage down there. Not to mention, too, the Lion having 419 millimeter guns, the same amount that Duncan has, also has a 26 second base reload once you upgrade to the 419 millimeter gun. So she's throwing more shells downrange. You can pin 106 millimeters of armor. Whereas the Duncan's 419s, you're only sending nine shells every downrange, downrange every 31 seconds. And they can only pin 70 millimeters of armor. Now, grant 70 millimeters of armor is still, it's a lot to pin at tier 9. But you can't just spam HE with impunity quite like you can with the, the Lion. You don't have a, as good HE Alpha, you don't have as good fire chance. It's only 1% down though, but again, 31 seconds versus 26 seconds. And I'm saying this because the Duncan was forced to essentially get played like a lion when I played her because of the nature of high tier gameplay. And the match watching right now is one of the few matches where I had enough time to actually do anything. Um, high tier games right now are most of them, like 5 out of 10, are just a race to get your damage in and do something for the match because there's so many matches that just of course are over in like 10 minutes so you have to try and you know get your damage in get your caps and get your kills in in that 10 minute time frame now of course some games do go on for a little bit longer than that and those are much better matches than what you're probably seeing well the match seeing us right now was actually a pretty uh, a decent game for the duncan it was a little one-sided but hey it lasted and i was able to do stuff in that in that game but yeah you're forced to play it essentially like a lion so at that point you might think, well, I'll just go ahead and pick up a lion. Now, that is true. Lion would be better for doing what I was forced to do in the Duncan for most of my game time with it. But there are, again, other things about the Duncan that I that I do like. The maneuverability is very nice. She's fast, nice and fast when you got that speed boost going. And I'm very much happy that you can get the turret rotation down to 24 seconds because with how fast the Duncan is, if you're making use of that speed and running around, it's nice that your turrets can keep up with you. Also, the rear firing angles on the Duncan are actually pretty good. I was able to stay pretty steeply angled into the enemy team with still getting all nine guns on target that is <laughs> excellent right there uh, you know you can't really stern tank of this thing because you have a 25 millimeter bow and stern but you your main belt is you know it's enough to bounce shells off if you're steeply angled and you can stay steeply angled stern in with the duncan so you got that going for you too right there and the torpedoes of course torpedoes with 30k alpha damage uh, they are out to 10 kilometers and you use them just like normal torps. You select the heading, they get launched, they do the insane little S-turn thing, and then they continue up on their way. I don't know why Wargaming kept this on the ramps for so long and didn't really show us more about it, but yeah, it's used just like any other torpedoes. It's, it's essentially like you have a single torpedo tube on deck right, I think it's like right in between the number one and two turrets. You have some pretty good torpedo um, arcs from there. So you're able to use them in a pretty aggressive manner when you are able to get in close. Now, the guns on this ship are in their sweet zone from around 15 kilometers in. From that range in, the dispersion is good enough to where you'll be able to land shells on target and you won't be spamming HE anymore. So if you're looking for an easy Duncan guide, 15 kilometers out, use HE, 15 kilometers in, you can use a little bit more AP. And of course, when you go to push in, keep that AP loaded. It is the very short fuse AP, which um, has its ups and downs. Ups being that against uh, cruisers, you're going to get way more pins than over pins thanks to the short fuse time uh, against battleships you're going to be able to chunk those extremities like the bow and stern and superstructure more because of that short fuse time uh, but the downsides are you won't be able to really penetrate citadel armor unless you're quite close so about you know 12 kilometers in then at that point you'll be able to punch them pretty hard and of course too it just you don't get those um pins on cruisers at angle when they're angled as much as you would with like a normal AP shell because short fuse it's going to arm very quickly and explode probably 
on the exterior armor rather than going in and making use of some of the strange geometry that, that we have in this game. And, you know, like you shoot the Zhao and the smokestack and you get a Citadel. That probably won't happen as much thanks to the short fuse time. But overall, I do like it. It is a British battleship thing and they are British battle cruisers, so it makes sense that they have that same shell going on with them. So what I did with the Duncan after getting a feel for how the ship plays is I played it as pretty much a lion when the match was, well, in that first usual like 5 to 10 minute window where everyone's sitting back at 18, 19, 20 kilometers taking pot shots at one another, kept the H loaded. The only difference from the lion is that I stayed on the move because yes, the Duncan does get the improved heal. It's not the super heal. You can't print back the whole ship after you get vibe checked by the Yammy. But it's enough to where you can get chunked pretty good and get back a good portion of your ship's HP. So I use the ship's maneuverability to basically play like a, a heavy cruiser, like almost like a Goliath at that point, just running around in the back, slinging HD at the enemy ships, so forth and so on. And then once the match progressed to the point to where you, you can start to push in, load in the AP, start to push in, use island cover as much as possible. Don't go to the open water in this ship if you can help it because the ship does need islands to either hide behind, break line of sight, or whatever. Avoid getting shot at because you cannot undergo sustained fire in this ship. Doesn't matter if they're firing AP, HE, SAP, or whatever. You are going to get melted down one way or another. So use island cover to break line of sight. And you do have that good 12.1 kilometer concealment as well on the ship, but with CVs, of course, that's negated if a CV is in the match. But if a CV is not in the match, it's a very nice consumer ring to have. You can, again, pick and choose your fights. That is a major plus to have in any battleship. A consumer rating that it can get you down that low. But again, if a CV is involved, it does kind of go out the window. So, overall, the Duncan is kind of in the middle in terms of Tier 9 ships. It's leaning toward good. And this gives me hope for the St. Vincent because I think a lot of the issues with the guns will be resolved once you get the 457mm guns of the St. Vincent. Even if the dispersion is similar, I mean, it only takes a shell or two of 18 inch to really bring the pain. So hopefully the St. Vincent will turn out to be pretty darn good based upon what we've seen here with the Duncan. The Duncan is definitely workable. The HE fire chance is good enough to where you can. Uh, if the match lasts long enough, easily past 110, 120,000 damage. In most matches that I had that ended very quickly, I was around 80, 90,000 damage in the Duncan. And these are matches, guys, that I'm talking like the match is over in like seven minutes. But in those seven minutes, you start at eight or nine fires because of the HE chance on the Duncan. So it's a pretty decent tier nine ship. So overall, I would give it a rating of about. And th this is like a hard one for me because I, I feel like. It's around a 6, but it's also decent enough to where it's almost a 7. So 6.5 out of 10 is about where I would put it at. It's on the better side for Tier 9 ships. It can be aggravating at times, but again, if you play it like a Lion or a Goliath for the first half of the match, then when you push in, load in that AP, use those 30... K alpha torpedoes for the last half of the match conserve your health where when you can push in you have the HP to push in because you do have a pretty squishy armor scheme on your ship it can work quite well in those regards I think we're giving did a pretty decent job of getting a, sh a ship line that has similar characteristics from the main line but also its own set of new characteristics in terms of the maneuverability and the gyroscopic semi-homing what semi-guided whatever you want to call them torpedoes here with these british battle cruisers based upon what i've seen here with the duncan so the pros being that she has very good concealment 12.1 kilometers you get the short fuse uh, british bbap you get a decent fire chance in the he alpha even though it's low for a british battleship it's still higher than most other tier 9 uh, battleships he alpha so you do have that going for you um very maneuverable you get the gyroscopic uh, semi-guided torpedoes with a 30k alpha damage with some pretty good torpedo uh, angles. Uh, DFAA, you get the specialized repair teams that allow you to recover a pretty good chunk of your ship after you get vibe checked. Um, and the maneuverability and speed and engine boost are also very nice touches as well. Cons being the armor scheme is very squishy. It is a brat battle cruiser, but I mean, hey, it's a tier 9 ship that's going to be given in, in a uh, battleship slot, so 
the armor is still squishy. The dispersion is quite frustrating. The 1.6 Sigma is annoying very much at times. You don't get the improved HE pins of the British battle crew, uh, battleship mainline. And of course, too, you don't have any guns in the back of your ship. So when you are kiting away, despite having pretty good turret angles, there are no turrets back there. So you have that whole section of ship with no turrets that's basically free farming damage for the enemy team. So again, overall, guys, it's a tier 9 ship, but it's a better than average tier 9 ship. But definitely not one that I think is going to be put up there with like all sauce, for example. So that's my two cents on the Duncan. Let me know what you guys think about her in the comments down below, those of you that have been lucky enough to pick her up in the event. Again, I would not recommend throwing money at the ship, there's going to be a free ship to grind in 10 weeks. And plus two, this is definitely not a ship that you would throw money at. It's, it's not an all sauce, it's not uh, an Ismo, it's, you know, it's not an amazing tier 9 premium. The, I think the St. Vincent's going to be the real good one of the line. Uh, but again, haven't touched the other ones just yet. But anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. 1 to 40,000 subscribers, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Wednesday. Have a wonderful week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.